Hi everyone. Today I wanted to talk to you about translation versus interpretation. This is a term that gets mixed up quite a bit. Now before I get into it actually, I usually say this at the end, but I thought I should say it at the beginning. If you are interested in tips and tidbits about translation, especially about freelance translation, please do subscribe and you will keep getting more of these videos directly to your YouTube channel. And if you find this e video useful, you can click like and you haven't found it useful yet, but now you will. Translating versus interpreting. A big reason why I bring this up is many times clients still know the difference. Especially when I was starting out, I would contact clients and say, I'm a translator, can I help you out? And they'd be like, oh yeah, uh, absolutely. We have a conference going on and we need a translator to help us talking back and forth and translate what so-and-so is talking about. But I realized they need an interpreter, not a translator. And at the beginning, actually, I felt kind of bad. Oh, I've been misleading them. They think I'm the person for the job and now I can't do it. But you know, I don't do interpreting. I only do written translation. If this happens to you, you haven't been misleading leading them. You've been using the term correctly, but unfortunately, if people aren't in the industry, they'll just use the term translation for written translations or for spoken interpretations, for interpreting. If they contact me, say, I need a translator for a conference that's going on and it's clear they need an interpreter, I'll just say, oh, sorry, we work on tr written translations, but I can recommend a couple good interpreters. So that way everyone's happy and we can move on. But just briefly, here's how it works. A translator does translations. Translations means reading and writing, while an interpreter speaks and listens, or listens and speaks. That's the difference. That's it. If it's reading and writing, you're a translator. If it's listening and speaking, you're an interpreter. If it's listening and transcribing and translating, it's still considered translation, but they'll write transcription on it too. We won't get into that now. We'll just consider that part as translation. If you're writing something, you're a translator. If you're just speaking, you're interpreting. Obviously, there are a couple differences here. Translations take longer, but they're also more precise. If you need a legal document or business documents or a patent or anything like that, chances are you do need a written translation. However, an interpreter can interpret immediately. That's why you see this very often at conferences or at meetings when people need to know the information right away. Although, obviously, being an interpreter, it's never as precise as a translation because it needs to be done on the fly. What about if you're just starting and you're wondering, should I be a translator or should I be an interpreter? I think I'm okay at this or that. What should I do? Well, I don't know what you should do. You should probably try both and figure it out. But as a general rule, interpreters, well, they're more creative, frankly, because if someone says something and you need to interpret it on the fly, many times you cannot translate literally. Basically an innuendo or a metaphor, just an expression, but you have to come up with the right expression in the other language. And in fact, many times you need to change whole sentences around. People who interpret also tend to be more outgoing. It's easier for for them to say things and they don't get tongue-tied as easily as sometimes I do. A translator, on the other hand, tends to be more thorough, more precise. They like to have a job well done. I would rather take the time and do a good job translating something and come up with a perfect product rather than maybe bungle something up and I realize down the line that I used the wrong expression. I get kind of paranoid about that stuff. So it really just depends on what you feel more comfortable with. Also, I should point out that you can definitely freelance interpret, but freelance interpreting means going to the location at the client's spot during the client's time. It means a lot of travel, which can be good. I'm a freelance translator and that's what I talk about. Translation, I can kind of do it on my own time. I mean, I have deadlines, but I can work within those deadlines. I can do it at home, I can do it in a coffee shop where I want, and I kind of like that because then I can sit down, concentrate, do what I need to do. I don't want to be too biased about it, but I am a translator, I'm not an interpreter, and so that's how I feel. I should also point something out, always a bit better in one language rather than another. If you're a translator, you should be native in the target language rather than the source language. You're translating into the language and it needs to be perfect. The product that you give to the client needs to be perfect. But if you're an interpreter, it needs to be the other way around. You need to be native in the source language because you need to be able to pick up on these metaphors and innuendos and expressions like that. And then if you find a bit of a roundabout way to say it in the other language, that's fine, but you know what message you're trying to get across right away. And that's the important thing. So keep that in mind as well when you're thinking about becoming an interpreter or translator and seeing which venue or which road you want to follow. And just briefly, I'll also mention there are two different types of interpreters, simultaneous and consecutive interpreters. Simultaneous interpreters, they're the ones who, as I'm speaking, they're interpreting at the same time. At the UN or any one of those conferences, you'll see these 
simultaneous interpreters doing things right away. However, it's really hard because many times you need the right technology, the right venue to hire these. So many times what you'll do is you'll get a consecutive interpreter. They let the speaker speak, they'll say a couple sentences, and then the interpreter will say those sentences back. Sometimes, in fact, you'll see them taking notes. So you'll see this in more in business meetings or things that are a bit more informal. So that's pretty much it. I hope that did help and I hope you found that useful and interesting. Those are the main differences between interpreters and translators. If I missed anything, feel free to let me know. And if you'd like me to discuss anything else in the future, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope this helps out. And if you are thinking of becoming either a translator or interpreter, I hope this helps in making your mind up a little bit. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Sabidum.